Hey, I'm Zeta Sage Plays. Welcome to San Bernardino Zoo, where our drone cams have had quite an upgrade. <laughs> I really, really love this new camera mode, uh, but that is not what we're doing today. Today, we are going to be here in the desert house building what I think is the best interior I have ever made. I'm looking forward to showing you. Let's go. Today, we're going to be adding four new animals into our zoo, including three from the brand new Arid Animal Pack. So we're going to be adding the Adax, the Dharma Gazelle, the Desert Horned Viper, and the beautiful Scimitar Horned Oryx from the Conservation Pack, which I have never used before either. Very excited to add those in here. And in keeping with the African theme of this house, we're going to be building the interior in a kind of a Moroccan style. And it is, when it's finished, easily, I think, the best interior I've ever made. I am very happy with it indeed. And we're going to be doing probably the most important part of it right here, which is creating a set of panels which are going to go on the wall all the way around the back of the building and allow the guests a huge panoramic view of the two big habitats that we're going to have at the back of the building and the desert viper as well. So both the habitats are going to be outside, but the guests will still be inside the building as they view them through some beautiful Moroccan style lattice work that we're going to build here. Now over in North Africa and the Middle East, they really know how to do interiors. It's absolutely amazing. Some of the stuff that they have over there, it's incredibly intricate. We're not going to be able to get that level of intricacy in um, Planet Zoo, but we're going to get as close as we can. And it's all about experimenting with these lattice panels. They've got beautiful shapes within them with all the cross beams and then some of the curves. And it's all about just sort of placing them and experimenting and working out how we can mix these together to make a really beautiful pattern that is going to give that sort of North African vibe that we want. And then we need to sort of build it into a wall that's all going to look like one cohesive piece, even though it's made from loads of different pieces. So almost everything I'm using here is from the Africa pack, which is one of my favorite um, DLCs in terms of the building stuff that it provides. Um, and it gave us meerkats and, uh, you know, what more do you need than amazing building pieces and meerkats? So I'm going to do a lot of work here. Um, in the first part of this episode are getting basically one wall panel absolutely perfect. So we've got the North African arch, we've got loads of the lattice panels, and we've got a few different sizes of the concrete pillars as well. What I need to do is extend this archway, the decorative archway at the top, down into the floor so that it looks like one cohesive piece. So we're going to use all the different sizes of concrete to match up perfectly with the archway and extend it down to the floor. We need to come up with two different designs for this panel. One which is going to be the centerpiece panel where the horned viper exhibit that you can see in the background there is going to sit so that guests have a good view of that. And then another one which is going to stretch around the back of the building and provide windows onto the habitats outside. There's a lot of work to do on this panel to get it to look as good as I want it to. So while I'm doing that, let's talk about the building itself. So the interior of this building is designed to be cool and dark so that it encourages the porcupines and the sand cats that live inside to be as active as possible during the day. They're both nocturnal, uh, but they will be active during the day if it is not too bright. So we want to keep it you know, cool and dark to encourage that. And it'll also be good for the visitors with this being set in South California, you know, on a bright sunny day, which let's face it is most days there. Then the ability to come into a building of stone and plaster that's cool. The light is shaded by all the fabric that we have on the windows outside. You can see the shafts of light coming in here um, that prevent most of the sun from coming in. And the angle that I built this building at, the sun shines on the front of the building to illuminate the outside habitats for the meerkats, etc and it will shine over the building and illuminate the habitats at the back that we will build in a couple of minutes. But the interior of the building is protected from the sunshine, which keeps it nice and cool in here. The panels are starting to look really nice now. So let's copy these all the way around the back of the building. There's no easy way to do this. You just have to do it one at a time and manually rotate them into place until they look completely seamless. Um, and you end up with something like this, which I am really happy with. I think this looks really beautiful. Let's move on to the exhibit. So this is where the Horn Viper is going to go and we're going to change this central panel here so that it provides a perfect view into the snakes. And we're also going to plant a garden behind this exhibit so that you can see it through the exhibit box itself. 
So normally, um, if you've watched my channel, you know what the main thing that I do with these exhibit boxes is to try and disguise them, put loads of them together, making it look like one big habitat, or um, cover up most of it so it looks like a little terrarium. But for possibly the first time ever, I'm actually gonna keep this the normal size and keep it open at the back, which I never normally do, because that way we're gonna build so that this rock work inside the habitat, which we're gonna do some custom stuff to in a minute, will sit in with the habitats on either side and look like one big expanse of African desert. Now I want to talk briefly about the exhibit information boxes that we have here. These get kind of a mixed reception. They're actually one of my favorite pieces because they for once are actually kind of uh, an appropriate size which is quite rare in Planet Zoo. Um, I wish we had habitat information boards this size. They're a bit of a weird shape but this is what I always do with them. You just rotate them so that the front is almost flat and then sink it into the exhibit and you get a really natural looking sign like you'd see in a uh, in a real zoo. Something that you won't get in a real zoo is a glass cube with no entry or exit points with animals in it. So what I'm gonna do is build a little um, sort of tube where the keepers can put one of those grabby things in to get snakes in and out. I believe that is how it is done sometimes um, in zoos. I know some older zoo habitats have things like this, especially with something like a viper where it's venomous, it prevents the keepers from having to actually touch them. So we'll just make a little one of those and put it in the back so it actually looks like you could get snakes in and out of here. We'll put a bit of stained glass in above this panel for a splash of color, and then it's time for Franchise Masters. Today's franchise tip is all about putting paths inside buildings. So when you have to put paths into a building where you have a custom floor, it has always been a nightmare in Planet Zoo, especially when you've got a floor like this, which is made up of about 100 rotated pieces, because in order to see where the floors were, once you place them in, the only way to do it was to individually select each piece of flooring, drag it down underground and put all the paths in, and then drag it back up to where it needed to be and get it to exactly the right position but since the tropical pack we have a new addition to our toolkit the invisible paths if you turn on the option to view all invisible paths and when you put the paths in the building you use one of the natural paths with the curbs turned off then the game will actually show you where all your paths are as you're building and that means that you can put the paths in like this exactly where you want the guests to walk make sure they've got the perfect route around the building they're not going to be walking through fountains you can get it absolutely perfect without having to move the floor which is amazing all right it's onto the habitats so this is going to be the scimitar horned oryx habitat on the uh, sort of right hand side of the building as you look at it from the front we're going to be using the pile of modified um, zoos mud walls rocks the new foliage etc that we created for the meerkat habitat as a back wall for the habitat it's got a really nice natural look to it and as always we'll go in and make some little adjustments to each piece so it doesn't look um, copy and pasted and then we will copy and paste the whole of that over to the other side to serve as the habitat for the adax and then we're going to copy it another time and this time sink it way down into the ground so that we get some rocks up against the walls where the guests are dig in a trench and fill it with water so that we can keep the um, animals away from the building. And then we're gonna go back to the exhibit and start customizing it and making it look as beautiful as we want it to. There's really interesting rock work in this exhibit um, as it is, but it is very much just rock and sand. So I thought some plants uh, and a bit of grass would make it look a lot nicer. And you can see behind it, we've planted some trees to give a nice vista as you look at it. And then the most important thing is to put one of the aquatic lights in and turn it on and as you can see once we do that it really really brings the habitat to life and looks so much better than it does normally now let's get on to detailing the habitats the main feature of these habitats is going to be some tall dead trees which are going to line the back of the habitat i got this idea from a zoo i think it's in france um i can't remember the name of the zoo so please let me know in the comments if you recognize it uh, you will if you've been there or seen photographs the entire zoo is built in a set of quarries and it has just these huge tall dead trees uh, just trunks standing up everywhere it looks really cool um, really unique look um, so I decided to use that for this habitat um, we don't have any sort of trees that work like that 
in the game all the dead trees are basically pines and they've got that very sort of northern look to them which is not going to work at all in a desert habitat so we're going to have to make custom ones and I'm going to make all of them out of the climbing branches from the habitat panel um, these are really really nice pieces but they are very small so we're going to combine loads of them together and then some of the um, little white birch branches as well uh, we don't need to worry too much about the joins or the color these are going to sit at the back of the habitat and you'll see in the cinematics at the end they look absolutely amazing back there um, get too close to them and you can sort of see where the you know a white birch meets a sort of browner tree and things like that but um, out where they are at the back here they look really good so we'll place those all across the habitat we'll do the same on the other one and then we're going to use one of them to make a little custom feeder as well so we've got the suspended forage feeder here uh, we'll cover it up with a branch add in one of the brackets from the Europe pack to hold it up get the color right so it sits in nicely with the piece itself and just a really nice um, little custom feeder for our oryx now we want the habitats themselves to be really dusty and bare for obvious reasons so how do we get some color in here what I'm going to do is continue the garden that we started building behind the exhibit and then use these cute little fences that we made for the Malayan tapir habitat to keep the oryx away from them so they don't start munching on all the leaves and then we're free to get a lot more um, interesting plants and a lot more color in this little section here which will be visible through one of the panels that the guests can look through these are all still desert plants but they're the kind of thing that hoofstock would definitely take an interest in munching away on so we'll put them behind a fence and keep them safe that's looking pretty nice we are so close to being finished now i can't wait for you to see the uh, the final building we've just got one more thing to do which is to keep the guests away from the windows which i guess technically they could just climb through i really like the barrier in game that you can use but that is going to screw up their navigation it prevents them from going past it and if they're near it you can get all sorts of crazy stuff going on with the guests so i'm just going to build my own that looks a bit like it but with a bit more of a, a north african style so we use the fence pieces and some of the north african ropes and then we just need to copy this all the way down the building really and then we can take a look at the finished desert house so here we go into the katmai desert house and we can see the interior this like i said at the start i think is my favorite interior i have ever done really happy with that let's check out the animals we've got the adax here and i love how we're starting to get vistas in the zoo like the jaguar dome in the background there it's so cool that you can see other parts of the zoo from each area that you're in here's the horned viper in its little custom box that we built we've got the scimitar horned oryx and we can see some of the dharma gazelle there as well i said it's finished but there's always more work to do in next week's episode we're going to combine something i have been asked for so many times with a tour of the desert house we're going to tour from the water terraces yes we're finally going to see the finished water terraces through the palm cafe out to the desert house i will do a lot more work on it in the meantime to make it absolutely perfect this is where we started today and this is where we are now thank you so much for watching i'll see you next week